is Frank from BPX in Wakefield. I'm sure you're all okay. Today we're going to talk about how we can reset a second mirror unit. I will show you how to do this first one, which is going to be through the GUI built in into the site manager. As you can see, we've got here one set up already. Then we can move into our the domain video test. Okay, and we've got it where we want it. Right, I can access just the GUI quickly and the site manager has it's it's a model that was done um, recently. So it does have built in a push button to reset. Now as you can see you've got the factory IP address. We can change it now and show you that it will Reset. So we're just going to go now and change it to 192.168.310, for example. Click save. So, so the default one is that one. And if you check, because we changed the IP address, it's going to ask us to reboot the second here. So we're just going to go back again. Should have done that. It says need reboot, so I'm just going to click in there, click reboot now. I can close that now. And eventually, this will reboot and it will, as you can see now, it's gone flat. It will change next time it goes on, it will change the IP address to the correct one that I've just changed to 192.168.310. And then we're going to reset it. So you will see that it's changed to default. So just give it a few more minutes. The features and the advantages doing it that way is that back in models done before 2017, they didn't include a reset button that is located on the top where if you've got a 3G or a Wi-Fi model where the antenna is, is at the back of that top uh, row and it's on its own. If you've got a, a, a LAN only model, then if you look at the word uh, LAN, uh, site manager on above the roof per se, at the back where the DIN rail mounter is, closer to that edge. Right, so. It has resetted, rebooted, and is showing the correct uh, or the device or the IP address we put with change device port. Now we just go into the GUI. That's how you reset it by software. And once you get in, you go to uh, maintenance, and then you click reset. It's either either it don't matter. You can click on reset the word. And then here it says type admin, so that's what we're going to do, type admin, and then reset. So as long as, it, uh, as, long as, as soon as you do that, just click reboot, and you click OK. And now it's going to ask you for a username and password, because no longer it's the username and password that you've typed in. It's gone to factory, uh, factory reset, so factory default. So... What we need to do now is to power on off. So I'm going to power on off the device. Okay. And in a few minutes, this will come with a flat bar, meaning that you cannot find it anymore and the status light will become solid red again because it's back to, back to factory settings so it's no longer the configuration we've put it in so let's wait it should be five minutes around five minutes reason why i've got these multiple multiple domains is because there's a feature 
is an advantage that uh, is gone, is dead, so it's, you cannot find it. So you can delete it now if you want. Delete it. Click yes. The benefits of having multiple domains, you can do grouping. So basically, if the site manager is, let's say, out of the main any of these domains, then you can drop the devices in the domains that you that you think they're interested to have, and then just on your accounts, bring your ghost into the domains you want that account to be present. The benefit is that this setting procedure we've done from the software can be done with any of the three accounts, whether you're an admin, an engineer, or the remote demo monitoring from the phone or any smart device that has room as a, a web browser can use that license link manager mobile and can access to the GUI and do this resetting. So you, you're protecting your assets by doing that and just letting your workers to just making connections to the devices only with no possibility to manipulate the settings on the site manager. So it's site manager is again back to factory settings, solid red light. Let's put our USB stick with the configuration. So it goes back again into our domain. Any of the USB ports, I like to use the USB USB configuration file uh, or format because it's easier by far. It's the easiest, in my opinion. So it's taking the blinking because it detected the configuration on the USB stick. So we just have to wait for it. It will populate in this domain because that's where the configure I created the configuration file. So just to remind you while we wait. Uh, you click in the domain you want the second minute you need to appear and you have in every domain a USB configuration icon just click in there put the name that you want it to have and off you go download the configuration file put it in a USB stick then on the second minute you need it doesn't matter which USB port I get asked a lot of questions which one it doesn't matter any will do just make sure that the USB stick is good it's not bricked and uh, it should be all right, it should have no problems. Just make sure your connections are okay. This will depend how fast, also your connection, how good it is. It will, it will make this process very fast or not. So just give you some time. Sometimes I find that if the configuration file doesn't write properly into the USB stick, it kind of corrupts the configuration file but still goes through and somehow sometimes it managed even to configure the second mayor unit although it's corrupted basically so it's not uh, written properly but sometimes it does go through even if it, it, it wasn't you know like when you write usb stick and you have to click in there click the icon for the usb stick and say uh, stop this device and then pull it out the PLC of the laptop. Sorry, <laughs> like I'm thinking of PLC. It's taking a little bit longer this time. Just gonna power on off again. I'm gonna remove the USB stick. Power on off. It might work faster this time. Let's give it a couple of minutes. It's taking his time. There you go. Now we've got it. So we just reset. We've got it there. With the lag, I'm so sorry. So we've got it there again. Back to factory settings. So that's one of the methods, like I said. The other one is dialing into the uh, second mirror unit using serial communication so you'll have to do you'll have to use something like iPad hyper, hyper terminal or 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 putty or something that emulates hyper terminal for windows so thank you ever so much see you soon bye